Are you sick of learning new binary representations yet? Well, we got one more integer representation to learn. We've learned what? Unsigned binary, right? And that's where each one of the bit positions represents a different power of two. We've learned about BCD, where each nibble represents a different decimal digit, the ones place, tens place, and so forth. Um, we've learned about two's complement. Now, the cool thing about two's complement, what two's complement gave us that the other ones didn't was negative numbers that worked arithmetically. Whenever we added two numbers together, unsigned binary worked, and the same exact mechanism would allow us to add positive numbers to negative numbers in two's complement. There's a little bit of an issue, though, and that issue is this. I'm going to write up a couple of binary numbers up here. Let's see. Let's see. One, 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 zero, one. And there we go. And one. Uh, all right. Now, looking at these values, if I were to ask you, which one's the largest value? Could you do it? Well, you can't do it until I tell you which representation we are using. The representation I would assume first would be unsigned binary. And so if you're looking at that, the most significant bit, remember the leftmost bit, as far as, as, as magnitude goes, the powers of two, that most significant bit is the one that is in, in, identifying the largest value. So that knocks those first two out of the running. These last two, however, now let's see which one's the largest one from these last two. So they both have a one in the most significant bit, bit position. Going right, they still both have a one in the next bit position. Then the third one has a one, but the second one has a zero, which means the third one, that is the largest magnitude value whenever it comes to unsigned binary. Pretty simple, right? Well, what if I instead said, now we're talking about signed, signed values. We're talking about two's complement. Which one's the largest? Well, remember, the most significant bit takes on a different meaning at this point. The most significant bit now is sign bit. And so these two are negative values, clearly not the largest anymore, right? So these two now are the ones that are gonna see which one has the most significant value. Both of them start with a zero, the same. Then the next bit position, the top one has a one in it, the bottom one has a zero in it. So this one, the top one, is the largest magnitude. So we got a different answer depending on whether we were looking at things in two's complement or looking at things in unsigned binary. Well, that is going to lead us to, well, it's a slightly different method of representing values that allows us to compare things with the same circuitry in the same mechanism that we use to compare unsigned binary values. Now we're going to use them, but add that ability to represent negative numbers. We want to represent negative numbers. So we have yet another type of representation. This is referred to as offset or biased notation. And by the way, I learned this a long time ago. So the way I, I write this is actually bias N notation. The N has a very important purpose. All right. So remember the number line for unsigned binary, and I'm going to write it exactly here. Unsigned binary went from Based on the number of bits, it went from 0 to 2 to the n minus 1. So for 8 bits, 2 to the n is 2 to the 8th, 256 minus 1. That means that the maximum value we can represent here is 255. Smallest value, the all zeros pattern, 0. All 1s, 255. All zeros, 0. All right. Now, what we want to do is shift this so that we're gonna take some of the patterns of ones and zeros and shift them down or bias them, offset them, so that we're going to have some negative patterns to represent. So what we're gonna do is a slightly, same order, so we're gonna take what represented zero. Remember, all zeros represented zero. We're gonna shift this down to negative n. 
So that's where that negative that dash n comes in. So we're going to shift that zero down to negative n. And then we're going to shift this one so that the, the order is still the same. So the range is still the same. We're just shifting everything down by negative n. So this maximum value now is to the n minus one minus n. And that gives us our range for our new numbering system. Still the same order. All right. Now, let's do some conversions so we can see this process. And in fact, right up front, real easy, if I see an all zeros pattern, it's just equal to negative n. If I see an all ones pattern, it's just equal to 2 to the n minus 1 minus n. All right? But we got to figure out the numbers in between. How are we going to convert those? And we're going to do it with an example. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start out using something called biased 127 in 8 bits. All right. So I've got 8 bits, still using 8 bits, still, you know, exactly that same number of patterns of 1s and 0, except this time instead of the all zeros representing 0, the all zeros represents negative 127. And let's do some conversions. So let's first of all try decimal to bias 127, once again, 8 bit. All right. Now, how does it work? Well, let's let's just pick one. Let's let's uh, I don't know. How about 23? All right. 23. Well, 23 is about here. Right. And if you look in the same number line, so zero is still in the same position. So 23, what we're looking at is some value that is much larger and much further in the pattern of ones and zeros than we would have had if it was straight unsigned. All right. So the steps are this one step one, add n to the decimal value. All right. So 123, my n is 127. So I'm going to add 127 to this and get, uh, what is it? 150, 150. Okay. And then the second step is convert as if unsigned. So using the same mechanisms that I use to convert unsigned, I'm going to convert that 150 into a binary pattern of ones and zeros. So let's go ahead and do what I did earlier with our little diagram of our eight transistors. So this is the ones place, two, four, eight, 16, 32, 64, and 128. All right, now, there is a 128 in 150. So we'll put a one in that transistor position and we'll pull out 128. And what that leaves us with is 22. All right. Now there's no 64, there's no 32, but there is a 16. So we pull out 16, we're left with six. There's no zero, but there is a four. Pull out a four. We got two left, so there is a two and there is a zero. So, 23 base 10 in unsigned, excuse me, in bias notation, bias 127 notation is 10010110. All right. Now, there's actually a quick way we can check to see if we did this correctly. I mean, remember, addition and everything works just fine whenever we're talking about binary numbers, regardless of whether we're doing it in binary or decimal. So if I were to take this binary pattern of ones and zeros that represents 23, would I get the same result I got before? So what is 23 in unsigned binary? What would it be in this number line position? Well, 23 is a 16. So 23 base 10 in unsigned binary. We're not talking about biased right now. We're talking about unsigned binary. All right. In unsigned binary, 23 is equal to a 16. So there's no 128. There's no 64. There's no 32. But there is a 16. That leaves 7. So there's no 8. But there is a 4. 
there is a 2 and there is a 1. So in unsigned binary, 23 equals that. What is 127 in binary? Well, it turns out that 127 in binary is 0111111. Let's just go ahead and add those two together and see if we get the same result for an offset of 127. 1 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 1 plus 1 is 1, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 1 is 0, carry the 1. 1 plus 0 plus 0 is 1. 1001010110101010110. It's the same. We got the same result. So it doesn't matter if you do this addition of n before you convert to unsigned binary or after you convert to unsigned binary. It all works out the same. What about going the other way? Well, going the other way is a two-step process also. In this case, so we've got that. Now we're going to try to do, in what little board we have left, uh, bi uh, uh, biased 127 to decimal. So it's still a two-step process. Step one, we're going to convert to decimal as if it were unsigned binary. Step two, well, step two is the result needs to be shifted or biased by 127. So step two is subtract n, all right? And in the case of one bias 127, we're gonna be subtracting 127. So if I have, let's just say what is the biased 127 notation 00101111. We'll just, uh, that, 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 that's the number we'll pick, all right? Now, the very first step says, convert as if unsigned. So this is the ones place, the two, the four, the eight, 16, 32, 64, 128. So this number is 32 plus 8 plus 4 plus 2 plus 1, and so that's 44, 46, 47. So this is equal to 47 base 10. Now, before we say that's our answer, remember, it hasn't been biased yet. So what we need to do now is subtract 127 from 47. So we have 47, we subtract 127 from it. What do we get? Well, when you take 47, when you take 127, negative 127 added to 47, you get, uh, running out of board space here, but what you get is, what is that, negative 80? Okay. So, there you go. The process of taking the order, the sequence of unsigned binary and giving it the ability to also represent negative numbers by biasing it, simple conversion process, we'll see how it's used when we start talking about floating point and double precision variables.